In this second tutorial, we will be able to multiply matrices. Multiplication of matrices is a little bit more involved than simple addition and subtraction because multiplication of matrices very much depends on the dimensions. You are not able to just multiply any two matrices together. There is a specific pattern of dimensions that must be followed for you to be able to multiply. And it's all explained right here. So if I wanted to multiply the first matrix, I called it matrix A, and it has the dimensions M by N, to the matrix B, which has the dimensions N by P, I know that I can do this matrix multiplication because these two middle numbers, the number of columns of the first matrix, has to match to the number of rows of the second matrix, or uh, si simply the middle numbers have to match up. If the middle numbers match up, then you are able to do the multiplication, and your result will actually be the outer numbers, the number of rows of the first matrix and the number of columns of the second matrix. You can see that I've called my matrix, uh, my product a, matrix AB, and it has the dimensions M by P, which are the outer numbers here. So again, the pattern simply is this. If you want to multiply two matrices together, the middle numbers have to match up. If they do, then the outer numbers will be the answer. So let's just look at this before we actually do any of the multiplications with the little game and see if we can figure out the mystery dimensions of this, these two examples. So I have matrix A here, and it's a 2 by 3. And I have matrix B here, which is a 3 by 1. I want to know what the mystery dimensions are here. Well, since the middle numbers do match up, I know that I can do this, and therefore the outer numbers will be my answer. So the mystery dimensions here are 2 by 1. If I go over to the second one, I've now put the mystery matrix in the middle, okay? But if I can do this matrix multiplication, then I know that since this is a 2, this middle number here also has to be a 2. So it has to be a 2 by something. How am I going to figure out what it's going to be? Well, since the middle numbers match up, I know that the outer numbers will be my answer. And since I know that my answer is 5 by 7, and here's a 5, this must be a 7. So it's sort of like a little game that you've got to piece things together. So this answer would be a 2 by 7. So that's just practice with the pattern. If we go and actually do some operations, let's look at these examples here. At the first one, before you do anything, you really should uh, make sure that the dimensions match up. This first matrix is a square matrix. It's called a 2 by 2. This second matrix has two rows and one column, so it's a 2 by 1. So you might be saying, yay, we're able to do this problem because the middle numbers match up. I'm going to introduce an equal sign. And since I know that my answer is going to be a 2 by 1, I'm going to make a 2 by 1. But I'm going to put some elongated lines here as a middle step. And then we'll have our final answer right here. OK, so this is how you multiply matrices. You're going to multiply rows from the first matrix times columns from the second matrix. What I like to do is give my eyes a little bit of a visual. I will circle the first row in the first matrix and the first column in the second matrix, the only column in this case. This is just a quick little visual because what I need to do is multiply this row by this column. And the first row times first column will give me the answer that's in the first row, first column of my answer. How do you multiply this row of 2, 5 to this 3, negative 4? Well, you multiply um, the, the, the elements together. The 2 and the 3 will multiply together to make a 6. The 5 and the negative 4 will multiply together to make a negative 20. You will always add these products together. So in this case, a 6 plus a negative 20 gives me negative 14, and that's the top of my answer. If you want to circle the next row, that's fine. I tend not to. I feel like my eyes see that I'm working sideways in this first matrix and that I'm working down in the second matrix, so I don't need to put circles everywhere. It starts to get a little uh, gunked up, in my opinion. So I'm just going to go. I know that I'm in the bottom row. I'm going to take the negative 1 times the 3 is a negative 3. 
and I'm going to take the 6 times the negative 4, and that's a negative 24. So the first two elements multiply together, and then the next two elements multiply together. Those two products are added up, and I get negative 27. And there's my final answer. It takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of practice, and I suggest that you do uh, the little circles here. Because we're going to be expected to do this by hand. I will show you how to do this in the calculator, but um, the final assessment in this chapter is going to be non-calculator. So I need you to be able to do it by hand. Let's see if we can do this problem. First, let's check the dimensions. Well, this is 2 by 2. And, well, look at that. That's also a 2 by 2. So not only do I know that I can do this um, multiplication because the inner numbers match up, the outer numbers are actually also 2 by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do my little um, middle step and leave a little bit of a line here and here. And I know that it's a 2 by 2, so I'll put all of that. And then I'll go into my, my final answer here. So I'm going to circle the first row in the first matrix and the first column in the second matrix and now I can do my multiplication. What I like to do is I'm going to take this row times this, col times this column and get this first answer, and then I'm going to go back to this first row again, but now to the second column to get this next answer, and then I'll be done, finished with the top row. Then I can use the bottom row. So we've got four different areas to do this. So let's start. This first row times this first column, I'm going to take the 3 times the 2 to get 6, and the 5 times the 4 to get 20. I always add these products together, and in this case, I get 26. I'm going to keep with this first row, but now I'm going to multiply it to this second column. So now it's the 3 times the negative 1, and the 5 times the 0. Negative 3 plus 0 becomes negative 3. I'm finished with the top row, so now I'm going to move on to the bottom row. Again, you can circle it if you wish. I'm not going to. This second row times this first column will give us the answer in the second row, first column of my answer. Negative 2 times positive 2 gives me negative 4. And 4, the second element, times 4, the second element, is 16. Add those together, and I believe you'll get 12. And one last part to go, the second row times the second column. My eyes see the negative 2 times the negative 1, which is positive 2, and the 4 times the 0, which is 0. Add those together, and you'll get 2. So we've done two examples now. Let's look at this third example. First, you should always just check the dimensions. This first uh, matrix is a 2 by 1, and this second matrix is a 2 by 3. So now you're looking at these dimensions, and you're saying, wait a minute, you're not able to do this. Why not? Because the middle numbers do not match up. So we're going to say not possible. And again, usually I'm going to ask for a reason why, and you might say because incorrect dimensions or dimensions do not match up. So you're going to tell me that you're not able to do it, but you're also going to tell me why. I have two more try problems for you, try three and try four. If you would please pause the video at this time and try these two problems and then start the video back up to see if you got the correct answers. Thank you for pausing right now. Okay, thank you for trying these two problems. And these are our two solutions here. Obviously, I didn't show my middle steps. I just went straight to the solution. So hopefully you got all of these elements correct. If you messed up a, sing, uh, you know, uh, a, a row or a column, it might just be because you were uh, looking at the wrong thing. So um, if you did not get these two answers, if you want to go back and check those, uh, try them again, that would be great. 
The last bit of the notes that I'm going to show you today is how to check yourself in the calculator. Now many of the things that we've done, especially the addition and subtraction, are pretty easy uh, to be done by hand and it would almost be a waste of time to use your calculator. But sometimes the multiplication um, and other things that we'll be doing later this chapter, uh, you'd probably want to use a calculator sometimes. So matrices on the calculator, first of all on the TI-84 calculator, if you press the second button and then the matrix button, that's how you access the menu. So second matrix will get you to the matrix menu. There are three um, menus. There's the names menu, there's the math menu, and there's the edit menu. If you have not done anything in your calculator, the very first thing you're going to want to do is go to the edit menu because this is where you're able to uh, input your matrices. You input your matrices here, and there are many different letters that you can use. Might as well just use A, B, and C, depending on how many matrices you have. But you can input your matrices here. Once you have matrices, then if you want to do whatever operations with them, you go to the Names menu, and this will call uh, your matrices to the Run menu, or to Run mode. Call your matrices, or matrix, to the, to the run screen where you do all of your operations. So that's how you can, once it's been edited and, and in your calculator, then you can go and put them uh, and, and do some operations with them. Um, the math has a bunch of different stuff that you can use, but really I think the only one that we're going to explore is the determinant, and we'll talk more about that later. So these are some of the options that you have on your calculator. Again, your final assessment is going to be a non-calculator, but if you want to right now make sure you're checking your answers on the calculator, that would be fantastic. Thank you for watching this tutorial.